I'm zoomed. Yes. I was like, you're very close to me. I'm I was close. zoomed. I was zoomed. Can you see up my nose? <laughs> <We're clear. laughs> no, 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 it's alright. Okay, so I'm BJ from Hearns, and we're going to continue on with our uh, talk about airbrushes. We're going to keep it quite simple. Uh, and we're going to go a bit um, further into compressors. So I'll just show you the different kinds we have and their features and how it all sort of hooks together with some accessories. We'll start with this one here. This is Iwata 2 Spray. It's the most basic compressor we have, but it does a really good job. So here it comes with uh, the dial, shows you the, uh, the pressure it's operating at. This is the pressure adjustment. This is the air output, the on off switch. And then at the back here, it's just another little dial which you undo. This is for releasing the moisture from the equalizing uh, tube inside. So you got to make sure that that's undone every time you finish using it. Just let it all out, otherwise it starts rusting up. Okay, it's got a couple of um, holders here for airbrushes as well. So this is a standard one which is for gravity feed airbrushes. They slide in like that. And this one here is for a side feed airbrush. So here's this one won't fit, but it accommodates it all. It also comes with a hose included. So the only thing you need apart from this to get going is an airbrush. Screw it all up and off you go. And next on we have this one here, which is a Ninja by Uwata. Small unit, uh, a bit more solid because this is all stamped metal construction. Also comes with a, a holder there. This is for a, um, a grody feed airbrush. So you can see, just pops in there. Makes it quite easy to have on your desktop. Uh, we've got, uh, there's your air output here. This one here controls the uh, amount of pressure. So you just unscrew it like so. Uh, and we've got the on-off switch at the back. From there we've got this one here, which is the uh, compressor with the tank. This one's a much bigger unit. Got your compressor on the top here, the holding tank here. Got the on-off switch on the top. And we've got regulator. So regulator is here, which you just easily spin to control the, uh, the pressure. You got the gauge for seeing the pressure output here. This is the water trap, so it collects all the, uh, the moisture out of the water so it doesn't spray through here. And then you'll see this part is the particle filter, so you don't get any dust coming through either. So to clear these out, after your session you just press this up and it releases all the moisture. The tank holds all the air, so after you finish, this is the release valve here. So it also lets all the moisture come out of the tank, otherwise you get rust in there as well. So they're the basic features of the compressors. Now we'll just go through how they all sort of connect. So these two actually come with hoses, but this one you'll need to get an additional one. So that'd be something like this one. These are the ones we've been using before. Actually, this one needs a different adapter. So I might just run off and grab an adapter. It needs a quarter inch, which is this is a standard eighth inch. Uh, I'll be back in just a sec. Okay. Oh, this hose has already got the quarter inch fitting on it. So we've got uh, uh, the two types of hoses available in, in stock. So whichever one you need, we'll be able to do it. Or if you need adapters, we've got adapters here as well. So this just screws onto here. Just untangle the hose. And then the hose just screws onto here. Like so. Okay, so let's fire it up and see how it sounds. Okay, so the compressor is um, operating at the moment, pumping the air from this tube here into the tank. So the tank's getting filled up. As it's getting filled up, you'll notice that pressure is going up on the gauge. So it'll go up to around that sort of point around here. So at the moment, if we try spraying, it'll be uh, quite poor because the pressure's too low. But once it gets up to this point, we can start going. It's not particularly loud. You'll find that um, uh, airbrush compresses their um, diaphragm type which means you know, there's a flap here that just moves up and down. It doesn't actually use a piston. And this one's a little bit easier to live with too because when it switches off, you won't hear anything at all. And then, you know, obviously when it switches off, this is what it's gonna be like when it's switched off. No sound at all. Of course, you'll have a bit of sound here as you're airbrushing. You move on to the Ninja. So with the Ninja, it's got a similar fitting on it at the moment, which is quarter inch. Uh, but, you know, it comes with a hose as well. But if you wanna use your own, you can actually disconnect this adapter and it comes down to a standard eighth inch. Like that. Okay, so let's, let's swap these over. Let's just release pressure. Okay, same sort of thing. Very straightforward. Screw this into here. Switch on it. There you go. So different type of sound. So obviously this one doesn't have the uh, the tank. So when you're using the you see you need to switch it on. You use it, and then when you finish using it, you just switch it off. Like so. But when you're switching it on. Okay. 
So this one here adjusts the, the air pressure. So with these compressors, it's always on at 100%. So the way it's reducing the pressure is it's releasing the air through this bleed valve. That's why you can hear a bit more air coming out of it. When you're using it, so at, at the moment you, there's no air, or very little. You can just feel a little bit of pressure. As I screw this down, you hear the pressure coming up. The pressure's coming up on the airbrush. And you adjust this one by feel. If you feel like you do want a, a regulator and a, um, uh, a water trap, these types can be adapted onto this particular compressor as well. And then after you finish, you just pop it back in the holder, switch it off, and then wait until the next um, session. From there, you got the um, uh, the two spray. So two spray is a bit bigger, simply because we've got an equalizing tube on the bottom of the compressor here. So it acts a bit like the tank, but doesn't actually hold anything in storage. So same sort of thing. When you're using it, you'll need to switch it on uh, before spraying. I'll just disconnect this one and plug this one in. I'll just make sure the release valve is all tightened up. It's tightened up. And then this one's got an eighth adapter. So we'll change the hose. I'll just take off this quick release. Okay, this screws straight onto your airbrush. Got these handy holders here. You can always spin these around as well. Okay, that's all connected. Switch it on. A bit of leakage here. That's better. Okay, you see the pressure going up. And it's automatically switched off. That's ready to go. This compressor automatically switches off when the equalizing tank is full, which is very small. So it has a little bit in there, but you'll notice it starts up immediately. Handy thing about this one is you don't need to keep switching it on and off. You'll notice that it's already on. Switch it off, pressure goes up, switches off. Okay, so this is the adjustment here. So it's on pretty high pressure at the moment. You can switch it, tone it down a bit. Pressure going down. And then of course, if you want more, you can switch it up like this. Like so. Just pop it back there. All more and make the switch off. There you go, and then you're ready for your next go. And then that's the basic operations of the uh, the compressors. How to hook them up, uh, the basic features amongst the different ones, and you know, the pros and cons. So they all work very well, but I guess, you know, it's got to decide what's going to work for your situation better.